title, The Last Light of Mariposa, by Wisdom Chronicles. In the high, sun-scorched hills of the Sierra Nevada, where the pines stand like sentinels over the rugged landscape, there lived a man named Thomas. His home, a small, weather-beaten cabin, lay hidden in a secluded valley far from the nearest town of Mariposa. Thomas had lived alone since boyhood, his only companions the deer that grazed near his door and the hawks that circled above the endless blue sky. The world beyond the hills was a distant thought, seldom visited and rarely missed. The days in the hills were long and unchanging, marked only by the passage of seasons. In the spring, the wildflowers carpeted the meadows, and the streams, swollen with melted snow, sang songs of renewal. The summers were dry and harsh, the sun baking the earth into a hard crust. Autumn brought a brief respite, the air turning crisp, and the leaves painting the hills in hues of gold and red. Winter was a quiet, introspective time, the snow muffling the world in a blanket of silence. Thomas had inherited a respect for the land from his father, a solitary prospector who had sought his fortune in the gold that once glittered in these hills. But the gold had long since been claimed, and Thomas's treasure lay in the simple, rhythmic life he led, in harmony with the natural world around him. The technology of the age had little place in Thomas's life. His tools were simple and time-worn, each with a story and a purpose. The rifle that hung above his fireplace had been his father's, its stock smooth from years of use. The small transistor radio, a rare concession to the modern world, brought him news and music on quiet evenings. The people of Mariposa, a small, tight-knit community nestled in the valley below, knew little of Thomas. They spoke of him in hushed tones, a mysterious figure more myth than man. To them, he was a relic of a bygone era, a living anachronism in a world that was rapidly changing. One autumn evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of purple and orange, a knock came at Thomas's door. It was a rare sound, one that he had not heard in many years. Standing outside was a young woman, her face etched with worry. She introduced herself as Maria, a teacher from Mariposa, and spoke of a sickness that had befallen the town. Many were ill, and they were in desperate need of help. Thomas listened, his expression unreadable. The plight of the townsfolk stirred something within him, a sense of connection to a community he had long shunned. Yet the thought of leaving his sanctuary, of stepping into a world he no longer understood, filled him with unease. That night, as he sat by his fireplace, the flames casting flickering shadows on the walls, Thomas wrestled with his decision. The isolation that had been his shield now felt like a shackle, holding him back from a duty he could not deny. With the dawn, he made his choice. He would go to Mariposa. The journey down the mountain was a descent into a different world. The town, with its bustling streets and noise, was a stark contrast to the quiet of his valley. The people, wary at first, soon warmed to him. They were a community bound by hardship their faces etched with the toil of a life spent wrestling a living from the unforgiving land. Thomas's skills, honed in the solitude of the hills, proved invaluable. His knowledge of herbs and plants, the law passed down from his father, helped ease the suffering of the sick. He worked tirelessly, his hands moving with a precision and care that spoke of a deep respect for life in all its forms. In the weeks that followed, Thomas found himself drawn into the fabric of the community. He shared stories of the hills, of the seasons and the wildlife, his words painting vivid pictures in the minds of his listeners. The children, especially, were captivated, their eyes wide with wonder at tales of a world so different from their own. Yet, as the sickness abated and life in Mariposa returned to normal, Thomas felt the pull of the hills. The community had become a part of him, but the solitude he had known for so long called to him with a voice that could not be ignored. On a crisp autumn morning, 
as the first light of dawn painted the sky, Thomas bid farewell to the people of Mariposa. They gathered to see him off, their faces a mix of gratitude and sadness. Maria, her eyes shining with unshed tears, thanked him for all he had done. In her gaze, Thomas saw a reflection of his own conflict, the struggle between the solitude he cherished and the community he had come to love. As he climbed the path back to his cabin, the sun rising over the hills, Thomas understood the morale of his journey. Life, like the seasons, was a cycle of change and renewal. His time in Mariposa had shown him the value of community, of the strength that came from shared hardship and joy. Yet, the solitude of the hills was a part of him, as essential as the air he breathed. In the end, Thomas realized that life was a balance between the two. The isolation that had shaped him and the community that had embraced him were not opposing forces, but complementary halves of a whole. As he reached the summit and looked out over the valley, the light of Mariposa twinkling in the distance, he knew that he would return. For in the interplay of isolation and community, he had found a deeper understanding of himself and the world around him. And so, as the last light of day faded from the hills, Thomas stood alone, a man at peace with his place in the tapestry of life. The hills, silent and timeless, stood watch over him, a reminder of the enduring beauty of the world and the ever-changing landscape of the human heart.